Hey everyone, uh, today we're looking at the Grimspeed Port and Polished Intake Manifold, uh, also known as the Runner Balancing Mod. Uh, what we have here today is a stock 2010 cast aluminum intake manifold, and then we have my customized um, cast 2010 intake manifold. Uh, so, getting down to the meat and potatoes of it, what exactly do they do? There's been a lot of uh, stuff on the forum about, oh, certain things are wrong, or oh, certain things are you haven't been done right, and blah, 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 blah. Well, first off, let's look at the standard intake manifold. So I'll take this one away. And here we go. Now, what Grimspeed does is more runner balancing than it is porting and polishing. Now, Porting and polishing is one of those words, the terms, that is more descriptive than what it actually is. And it's mostly because that the true term for what Grimspeed does is a copyright. And so, hence, we won't be using it in this video. Because um, I'm not that wealthy and you guys can always Google it. Now, what they do is they take factory gasket. Well... Actually, this isn't what they do, um, but we'll start off with the factory gasket. And you will see here that all of the runners are pretty much the same in terms of how large they are, how much over material is there, and blah, 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 blah. Now, the only issue with this is if these four cylinders are supposed to flow the same, but they don't. But if they are, then this is perfect. They're, they're pretty much identical. Unfortunately though, in reality, they don't. Um, I don't have permission to post exact numbers, so we're going to use fake numbers for the purposes of this video. Say th this is number four, which it is. Uh, so number four, three, two, one. Okay. Uh, now let's pretend, let's say this flows 300 CFM this flows 250 CFM, this flows 250 CFM, and this flows 300 CFM. Are you noticing a problem here? Well, this, these two happen to flow less air than these two do. Now, at low RPMs, what's happening is you're not actually flowing 300 CFM. But uh, at low RPMs, you're not going to notice all that much. Okay, you, Your air-fuel ratio is going to be fine because you're not overflowing the amount of the port. Now, if you start upping the boost and you start increasing the turbo speed and you start flowing more, you start getting a runner imbalance. These two choke while these two keep flowing. Now, because you only have one exhaust gas sensor that is determining how much fuel to apply, it is going to use the average. So now it's doing 275. Well, 275 is too much fuel for here and too little fuel for here and here. All right, now we've got a different problem. We've got a lean cylinder, a rich cylinder, a rich cylinder, and a lean cylinder. Well, that's not all that good because you're washing two cylinders and running two of them incredibly hot. In the Genesis Coupe, however, it is a known problem with the fourth, fourth cylinder lean condition. All right, well, Derek, how come we don't have a number one cylinder lean condition. Well, we do, all right? The only difference is we don't seem to be talking about it that much, but it's there. Uh, there could be a number of reasons why certain people haven't had that issue. This injector could flow a little bit more fuel. They may not be a perfectly matched set of injectors. Um, it could be something to do with how the fuel rail is set up. I don't know, to be perfectly honest. It just hasn't been all that brought up. However, Grimspeed says this flows high, normal, normal, high. So what they do is they make these two also flow high. So they get, according to the one thing I can say, is that they have a 14% variance between here and these two. And a 14% variance between here and these two. So what they do is they maximize these as much as they can. They increase these ones to 7%. So now it's a 7% between here 
and these two, and a 7% between here and these two. The shrinking that doesn't solve the problem, okay? But 7% uh, of a difference in airflow is not that much. And you actually, by the time you reach that full 300 CFM kind of flow, you're actually choking at the head before you're choking at the intake manifold. And choking at the head, when the head is even, or we assume is even, um, means that they'll choke equally. The intake manifold is now no longer choking them in comparative to the head. So a lot of people who have been getting them back have noticed that these two are perfectly gasket matched, all right? But the out two, the outside two, this one and this one, aren't touched at all. Well, why not, right? Well, that's because if these two are already flowing high, then these two, uh, and you modify them, then they're going to increase the variance again. So instead of being as, as close as 7%, they port them out, and, or they clean these ones up and increase their flow, you now go to 8 or 9 or 10 percent, whatever it works out to. So we don't want that. So And neither does Grimspeed because they're putting their name behind the fact that they're runner balancing as close as, as they can. So why would they touch these? It's just going to increase the variance and we don't want that. Now, um, the one thing that they do do is they media blast the inside of the runners, okay? Um, and a really good example of, of uh, what they're doing, and they've taken this into account, okay? They've taken this into account. Because um, they did the same thing to their test model, and their test model, that's how they came to their 7%. So the media blasting is on the inside here. You can't really see because this isn't HD, but you'll see that there is a bunch of little marks, okay? When it's media blasted, there's no fuel dilution color, there's no fuel staining or anything like that, which is apparent on this one here. You can see I had a little bit of fuel staining, okay? Or oil staining, whatever. Uh, so what the media blasting does is, hey, say you got all these little bumps, okay? And we'll use my fingers as an example. Those bumps have grooves, okay? Well, what the media blasting does is it kind of comes along and it goes chop. So the grooves are still there, but the bumps aren't so high. And that increases laminar airflow because instead of these big grooves constantly disrupting it and creating little torrents, okay, is the grooves are made smaller and similar to the effect of a golf ball you get these little vortices in here and that creates an air cushion for the faster air to travel over top of the slower air so is that why they did it i don't know then maybe they just like media blasting uh... we'd have to ask elvis by the way elvis thank you um, but that's that they do that so there is some smoothness okay now people are people have said oh i still see casting marks well casting marks are can only be taken down so far before we start increasing the flow and we run into the same problem okay if you want if it makes you feel better and sleep better at night take some sandpaper and run your finger through the hole and polish out your casting marks but understand that once you've done that, you've changed the balance that Grimspeed has created. So let's put this aside. And now that we understand the intake manifold and what is wrong with the factory one, we're going to look at the one that Grimspeed did for us. All right. So first off, I want to start off with Grimspeed does not offer this color. Okay. Uh, this is powder coated purple. I, I don't know if the camera is going to show it as blue. Same problem with the turbocharger. Um, but it is actually powder coated uh, translucent grape uh, purple. Um, which kind of has like this little pearlescent effect. Uh, but either way, what Grimspeed does, and we will grab an OEM gasket. Where did I do that?
and you'll see here that in order to get the flow where they needed it to be they did gasket match that is just a byproduct of how much material they had to remove in order to generate the same amount of flow it is not the sole purpose of doing this process this one like I said is untouched because it already flows high and this one here again is untouched because it already flows high so and you can kinda of, sorta of see how much smoother it is it's more of a gray matte gray um, and that's because it's media blasted so all four runners are in fact media blasted um, and that's basically why you would get this done is to reduce the variance between the flows okay now I've been requested uh, to explain my intake manifold a little bit more in depth uh, and what makes it special. Um, first things first is it's purple. And purple is always special. And next you will see is that there is open space back here. That's completely open. It's not. This has a large uh, chunk of casting in here uh, that I removed. Now, in order to remove this casting, um, I had to remove the vacuum tank. Now, this big hunk right here is uh, the vacuum tank. And what the vacuum tank does on the Genesis Coupe is that it allows the uh, blow off valve solenoid to have a constant supply of vacuum in order to operate the blow off valve in boost situations when it needs to bypass the compressor and it does that by opening the blow off valve to prevent turbine overspeed and that is the effect basically of saving your engine um, now if we flip mine over you will see that I've completely removed all that casting. All of this is gone. And somebody's going to say, but what about all the standoffs? Well, this standoff here uh, is the intake manifold support bracket. Same with this one here. They're not needed because I'm going to use a Grimspeed phenolic spacer as a thermal barrier between my intake manifold and my engine. Uh, in that process, these can't be used anymore which is okay because they you don't really need them they're only there because Hyundai offers a 10-year warranty um, but those are gone I don't need them because I just don't so as you can see I've carved them off now this one here is still here uh, because it holds up a bracket that supplies coolant and to, to me that's important uh, this little bracket down here and it's got a little nub of casting there um, that has been shaved off as well because the only purpose of this nubbin is to hold the vacuum line to my now non-existent surge tank. So that is that process. Uh, I don't need this, so that's gone. Um, on the far side here, you'll see that there is a nubbin again that I have completely removed. And that's because, again, this holds the vacuum line towards the surge tank. Not needed it for my application, so it's gone. Uh, on the top side of the manifold, you'll see both of those nubbins exist. And you will see that both of these nubbins exist. Now, these nubbins are for holding the fuel tank purge valve, okay? And that just gets rid of fuel tank pressure. But you can see from here... If I hold that like that, yeah. that um, this whole section here is completely gone. Now, the things that I get rid of in this process is I get rid of this chunk. I really actually have no idea what this is for. I'm assuming it's just like a support for this. Uh, 
this holds up a sensor or something like that and I deemed that it wasn't necessary so I didn't worry about it and this is a ground strap for the AC system apparently um, which can be moved to a different point on the intake manifold I'm just gonna put it right here on mine and this holds up I think a knock sensor or something like that which again I'm just gonna move to a different port uh, a different thread um, or something like that I don't remember but I know it's not necessary to be mounted there so I got rid of this vacuum tank um, the ones that you definitely don't want to remove are this, these two here uh, because they hold up your fuel rail and that's important but all of this casting in here um, now in doing this the, this right here as it sits weighs 7.7 .7 pounds and the purple one as it sits uh, weighs 5.4 or 5.2 pounds. I don't have the exact number off the top of my head. But that's the intake manifold. That is the Grimspeed port and polish. Again, I want to thank Elvis for doing the polishing, the porting on it. And I want to thank Matt and Brandon at Grimspeed for being awesome to deal with and excellent guys who have answered literally a million questions that I had for them. Uh, there's a couple more product reviews coming out. We've got pistons and con rods and bearings and a bunch of stuff from PRW coming up. And the dev videos have started, so definitely watch in the sidebar, wherever it is, um, because the dev videos have started. The engine is coming out. There should be a video coming out every, at least every week uh, showing the progress on that. But before the videos come out, there's going to be a whole bunch of snapshots. Uh, I'm trying, at least of different parts of the engine. So if you guys have anything in particular you want to see, put something in the comments. Put something on the Project Woodstock uh, GenCoop.com forum page, um, which is now in the build section. GenCoop has a build section, so definitely check it out because there's lots of killer rides in there. And uh, yeah, so thanks for tuning in.